made in Chiha. <laughs> I should have known right there. Oh, hey, boys and girls, you've stumbled upon this video because you are either a subscriber or you're interested in purchasing one of these. So I'm going to take you along for my uh, two day journey on uh, the pros and the cons of owning one of these assembly operation and why I returned it. So at a glance, uh, right here, you can see three year warranty, and 45 mile an hour dot tires. Kind of cool. A three year warranty applies to the motor. It's a one year on the, the uh, chipper and 45 mile an hour tires don't mean anything. That's just a rating of the tires. You can only tow this thing a maximum of 25 miles an hour, but so you got to read the fine print and uh, make sure you know what you're getting into here. But anyways, I'm going to show you some uh, pictures and some videos of operation and uh, <laughs> you're going to find out if you want to buy this or not. So let's get on with the show. So it arrived and uh, the, the package, the crate was all dinged up and banged up. I was able to peer under the hood and look and the contents inside seemed okay. It didn't seem like there was any mechanical damage. So I signed for it, brought it into the garage and pulled the lid. And this is what I saw. I was like, okay, it looks like it's all there. So let's start pulling the pieces out and start putting it together. Well, I discovered that uh, there's some uh, curb rash here and some paint flaws there. And it's like, well, that's minor. It's going to get dinged up anyways, right? Well, little did I know that the troubles were going to keep continuing. Right here's an image of some washers and some nuts and lock washers and tools. And just to remind me uh, that I was missing some washers, lock washers, and the tools pictured above, they belong to me. They're supposed to be supplied with tools and they came with some, but not everything. So again, uh, I took photos along the way as, as a reminder of what was going wrong as I was putting this thing together. Here's the two main latches that hold the intake chute onto the drum assembly. Those latches had to be really finessed and adjusted, took a 10 millimeter wrench in about 15 minutes of time to make sure they're adjusted properly. And they never were adjusted properly because of the bent metal and an improper weld. Here's a little toolbox in the front. Notice uh, 25 miles an hour, I like where they put that, huh? And the latch is all bent. One on YouTube is orange and uh, doesn't have any print and can't see the latch, but I assume it's the same piece of junk. And I noticed the drum housing on this one is orange, so maybe that's last year's model. Maybe it was a better one. There's another assembly video on YouTube, and you can see that they received their tools. Also supplied are some earmuffs, some gloves, and some goggles. Well, the goggles broke as soon as I tried to put them on. The earmuffs are ridiculous, and the gloves, I wouldn't even... No, let's just not go there. Here's a photo of the top of the toolbox. You can see the little cotter pin that's bent over. I was wondering why the lid would not close properly. Again, bad welds, bad latches, bad hinges. And now the cotter pin goes through into the other side and interferes with the closing of the toolbox. Ridiculous. Every step along the way, there was something. So here's the chip chute and that uh, snorkel would not fit on because there was some welding birds. So I had to get a file and chisel and bang them off and smooth it down before it would even fit on, never mind spin freely. The stand on this was undersized and it wobbled like crazy. And that little knob to the right actually is supposed to tighten the trailer hitch that goes to your vehicle. It would tighten about a turn and then bind up. It seemed like the hardware was mismatched. A lot of bolts were stripped and uh, had a lot of issues putting this together. The best part of this thing was the Kohler engine, and that's a stretch, but no issues with the Kohler engine at all. Except for the fact that it's not supposed to have any gas in it or oil, and I found that there is a gas odor from the tank, and the dipstick was already registering oil. I put about a half a quart more in there. Perhaps it was braking oil. Overall assembly of this was a nightmare. About 50% of the bolts had issues. They were binding almost like they were mismatched. There was always uh, an issue with the wheel bearings or misalignment, metal pieces, bad welding. It was a real nightmare to put together. Let's get into the videos and see how this thing operates. Oh yeah, other videos online claim it chips as fast as you can feed it. <laughs> Watch this.
as you can see in here, uh, never mind a six inch capacity or a three inch, it didn't even want to swallow a two inch. It took forever. What we're looking at here is the uh, side of the output shaft on the engine that connects to the pulleys that drive the belts. And all the black soot there is from the belt, so we've got a belt issue too, that's for sure. Here's a photo of a nut that's not secured all the way. Notice the lock washer is not compressed, and this is something that I didn't touch. It came from the factory this way. And by the way, that other bolt was seized. It would not tighten up. And here's what it should look like when it's properly tightened up. Notice the lock washer's flat. Again, something I didn't have to touch, but it came from the factory this way. Here's a photo of the uh, input shaft, we'll call it, for the drum on the bearing. And notice there's two little set screws, Allen screws. One of them is just resting on top because I found it on the floor, luckily. And the other one was finger loose, uh, maybe about half a turn and it would have fell out. So that allows uh, or keeps the drum from sliding in its place. Well, luckily I found those two pieces or else we would have had some catastrophic failure. And here's the uh, side where the uh, cover has been removed and the bearing housing and those studs are welded in place and all those studs are at different angles making it very difficult and they're threaded all the way too it makes it very difficult to remove that plate but we're looking at the side of the actual drum and we're about to pull the drum out and inspect it but look at the welds on that <laughs> pretty uh bad Here's another shot of the, uh, the drum. So notice the blade has five bolts. There's no slots in the blade or the knife, we'll call it. Um, so that blade is fixed to that drum. And if that drum is welded bad, then you can't adjust that blade. There's, there's no adjustment in the blade. Like other models have adjustment. There's either uh, loops in the blade or the anvil. You can adjust it, but not on this one. Here it is with the drum removed. And uh, I was wondering what the uh, sounds were inside that I was hearing. So I completely disassembled this thing and tried to uh, figure out what I was hearing. <laughs> Take a listen to this. If I don't videotape this, then it never happened, right? Here's the blade or the knife. That's the anvil. Those are the bolts. Yes, I removed the plug. That way I can eliminate uh, compression issues. And uh, sorry for the shaky camera, but I want to rotate this drum here and I want you to listen of the metal pieces inside of this drum. Can you hear that? Let me move closer. That's my chair and I know it's not going to be in focus, it's going to go in and out, but I want you to listen to the metal pieces inside of this drum on this chipper when I rotate it. Listen. What the hell is that? Well, I honestly don't know what that metal sound was. Maybe it was uh, some pieces of metal inside the drum from the, the crappy welding job. <laughs> Either way, it doesn't sound very good at all. So here's uh, an issue here. The, uh, the bad welds result in a bad cut. As we all just saw, this thing won't cut for crap. And if you look at the gap spacing on the knife, starting at the left, there's a decent gap. But as you go to the right, it, it closes down and it actually hits. And I'll show you that in a minute. And uh, the ones on YouTube are a little bit different. Well, orange, yeah. Different bolts, too. So I'm not sure if this is a better design or maybe I just got a crappy one. The anvil's also been painted orange. So here's the anvil pulled out. And on the left side, there's a nice chamfer. On the right side, there's a rounded edge, and it looks like somebody came in and grinded it down for the reason that it was hitting. So if you take a pair of scissors and you dull or round the edge on one of the blades, it's not going to cut very well. Yes, it'll clear, but it's not going to cut at all. So a huge design flaw. And the anvil should have loops in there or holes so you can move it. And there are, as you can see, are no uh, loops. There's a bolt goes through and it screws right into the anvil and it's fixed just like the blades are fixed. The, the blades will move a little bit, but not much. So overall, bad design. And a little jam. Just 
never made it. I mean, this thing can't even handle two inches. And there's no adjustment on here. Yeah, there's a bunch of metal flopping around inside. That's what you just heard. You can't get it out either. Yeah, unfortunately, you can loosen these nuts here, these bolts rather, and this blade will move maybe uh, 64th of an inch, if that. Right now it's wide open. It won't open any further. And you cannot adjust the bottom handle, as they call it. Uh, it would just won't do it. This this thing's no good, man. It won't uh, it won't chop. They show you videos of putting big logs in here and, and whatnot, and uh, mulches them right up, but not this one. So it's got to go back. Maybe you can see this here. So let's use that center bolt as a reference. So I'll zoom in to the center bolt, and we're looking at the gap below the blade against the anvil. We go to the left most bolt. See how it widens up, and then you go to the right. Here, see how, how close that is, how narrow that is. You cannot adjust it. This is wide open. In other words, if I loosen that bolt and try and raise that blade, it doesn't go any further. That's it. And if you take this bolt and loosen it and pull that edge of the blade down to match that, man, you'll be here all day. Yeah, I mean, that's not cutting as it is. It really won't cut if you tighten those blades up. But uh, I, I've tried. I've tried everything, emailed the company, and they said open the blades up about a sixteenth of an inch. Well, that's, that's it. It won't go any further. He thinks there's a defective bearing or something. And I pulled the cap and looked, and everything looks fine. Everything's tight. A lot of bolts on here that are <laughs> stripped. I mean, that's ridiculous. And look at all the all the dust little black specks all over this cover and you should see the other side I think the belts rubbing on something maybe it'll break I don't know and uh, yeah this wheel bearing cap or seal it's it's crooked I mean look you can just you can just push it with your finger well, I could earlier maybe it's stuck now no there it goes anyways so I don't have anti shake on just wanted to show you real quick what's going on with this thing but overall not worth the money so many issues i think it's going back oh look this somehow worked its way loose it vibrated loose came right up wow that's a lot of travel and i tight you have to tighten well this one is loose but that's just the, the closing now these are the nuts that pull the tension down i mean and everything's all twisted and out of spec and Ridiculous. One thing after another with this. <sighs> Kohler engine's okay. But the rest of it... It's just not worth it. Yeah, look at this. Try, I tried to tighten this. It won't budge. It won't come out either. That's screwed. That's screwed. Oh well. The engine's probably the best part about this. And that's a stretch because it's a Kohler. Sorry, Kohler. I've had bad experiences with you. All right. Well, let's hope I can get a refund on this thing because everything about this <laughs> is pretty screwed. Could you tell I was a bit frustrated? You shouldn't have to pull apart a brand new chipper like this to try and fix it. Obviously, I got a lemon, but man, it was one thing after another with this. And if you're looking at chippers and you've made it this far, hopefully... You can use this video to your benefit to see if you want to purchase this model or style chipper or not. And uh, like I said, I got a lemon and uh, even if you send me another one, I'll try it, but I'm not going to purchase one at this point. Um, I, <laughs> I, I might just go rent one because I'm convinced that they're all like this. Anyways, in closing, we're going to show another quick video that shows what happens when you turn the anvil around and it'll show you the interference issue that I'm having. So anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Try this again. So here we go. Boom. It, the blade is touching the bar or the knife is touching the anvil, whatever you want to call it. 
won't allow it. So you have to pull this out, flip it around 180 degrees. And before you say, we'll just loosen these bolts and raise the blade up, the blade's already as high up as it'll go. So bad design, can't open it, it won't chip uh, for crap. And now we've got this issue here. So there's no adjustment on this design. I don't know if it has anything to do with this case being black. All the other ones I see online are orange. But maybe this is the new model, or maybe this is a Home Depot special, and the welds are out of whack. Everything's out of whack here. There's no adjustment. So this thing is uh, pretty... Uh, Pretty crappy design, I might say.